you know, I can't, I can't say for certain what do the Cuban people think. I mean, the Cuban people are a lot of people. There's 11 million people on the island, and they all have the right to their own uh, distinct opinion. And there are a lot of opinions. Um, there is a small set um, of Cubans that are known sort of abroad as, as the quote-unquote um, organized opposition or organized dissident movement. Um, and they are individuals who are attempting to actively um, uh, start some kind of political uh, movement or, or, or organization to oppose uh, the current government and, and promote some kind of um, democratic change. But it's a very, very small subset of people, a very small subset. And the dominant quality among Cubans that I saw was a lot of apathy, a lot of I got to get by day to day, I can't think about these bigger things. I think there's, there's an unmistakable sense that there's a frustration with um, a lack of opportunity, economic, uh, economic uh, opportunity, and they certainly blame the government to a large degree for that, but they also blame the United States and the U.S. embargo. A lot of Cubans resent the fact that the government has such, uh, uh, such strong control over all aspects of, of economic life. Um, you know, people that want, I mean, something like a small business, if I wanted to open a restaurant, you know, uh, in the United States, you might, you have to apply for a, a permit and you have to buy the space and you have to do, a, but, you know, you can do it. It's not easy, but in, in Cuba, it's incredibly hard to do that. It's incredibly hard to do it and make, and make money. The, the rules are so, so tight. And so I think people resist that level of control, which explains why the black market is so booming, uh, or is part of the reason. As for Fidel Castro, I think that as, as much as people are, uh, frustrated with the Cuban government, uh, want changes, whether polit political or economic. Most Cuban people today have an enduring level of respect for Fidel Castro. Whether they think that what, you know, where he is now or in the last few years was right or wrong, uh, in the early 1960s in particular, right after the triumph of the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro represented a figure of idealism, of hope for change, of hope for social justice. Um, and that's a hope that I think a lot of people still cling on to. And so, they, they, they sort of honor the memory of that symbolism by, I think, having that enduring respect for Fidel Castro, even if they don't agree with his policies all through the years, or even if they might tell a joke about him that you know, some might view as offensive, or uh, even if they want political change, that there's a sense that there, there's a level of respect. And I think that you know, he's, he's very sick, and if he does pass away in the near future, you wouldn't, I, I don't think you'd, the Cuban government would have to force people to go to his funeral. It's gonna be a, in, a huge event, and people are gonna come out of respect whether they want change whether or not. Um, uh, so it, it's, it's a very complicated, I think, relationship that the Cuban people have with Fidel Castro. I mean, you talk to a lot of people that have grown up on the island that are, end up in the United States, and they talk a lot of, say, only negative things. Um, uh, but there are people here that, that you know, manifest the same kind of ambiguity, and, and that was a real sentiment that I found uh, on the island when I was there.